Hi, so today I would like to talk a little bit about the process of cycle sequencing and Sanger sequencing, which is something we use to get our end results so we can look at different parts of genomes that we have sequenced. So after we exosap, it is time to cycle sequence. Cycle sequencing is similar to P PCR, except you will need two master mixes, one using only the forward primer and one using only the reverse. This will give you two sets of template strands. These template strands will be a little bit different from PCR. They will all be varying in lengths. We put big dye into our into our cycle sequencing. So this allows for different nucleotides to be dyed a certain way. And a different dyed nucleotide will end a fragment of each different length. So in theory, we will have a fragment that is one base one nucleotide in length, one that is two, one that is three, so on and so forth for both the forward and the reverse. So we put our master mix into a 96 volt plate along with our samples. So you have to enter in each sample twice. And then we put it in the thermocycler on a program that we call 3-1 Auto. That goes for about an hour. And then we take it out. After we take it out, we have to clean the product before we can do anything else. This cleaning involves the use of EDTA, ethanol, and water. This just helps remove all the leftover from exosap, PCR, and cycle sequencing so that the precipitate that we get at the end is strictly the fragments of DNA that we want to be sequenced and nothing left over that could be contaminant. So we pipette these in in different rounds and then we place our plates in the centrifuge and they spin for a while on different cycles. So our first cycle goes for 30 minutes. Then we flip our plates to make sure everything is dried out. That runs for three minutes. We take them back out. We put in another cleaning mix. We put them back in for 15 minutes and then flip them again for three. After that's done, we can heat our plates for 15 minutes so that we make sure everything is fully evaporated and we're not adding anything extra in when we go to add the high dye. Once those are done, we can now add high dye, which just allows the 3730 to read the sequences. So we put 10 microliters of high dye in for each sample and then once that is done, we can set up our 3730 process. So we need to put a septa over our plate and place it into a container so that the 3730 will be able to read it. These containers are similar to the ones that contain the buffer and water that the 3730 uses. Before you use a 3730, you need to make sure that the buffer has been changed for the day and how you can tell that will vary depending upon a lab. Before we can run our plate, we need to make a template. So we will go to a computer, select an Excel program, and design a template specifically for whatever part of the genome we are working on. This just allows us to tell the 3730 what it's running and all the data gets collected in a set that is easily transferable to Genius, which is the program we use to read the genomes. Hi everyone, we really hope you're enjoying our videos and we'd love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our videos. Please keep watching. We love what we're doing and we hope you do too.